So welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome back to our workshop Wednesday. As promised from before on the last video, we said we'd talk about the workshop today, the design of it, the layout of it inside. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce to the lads here. These are our team. We have Mick Shannon here. Mick knows all about machinery and he is a mindful of knowledge here. Marco, as you would have seen from the last video, Marco was a great man to do a bit of welding. Uh, he also has his apprentice here, Blake. Our oh, Bruce is here. The other dog has gone off somewhere there. He's afraid of the drone. And we have Sean Kyo here. Sean is the apprentice mechanic uh, who started was there. Uh, when, when have you started? Spring. Late spring, spring. Late spring there. And uh, big shout also to Caleb there. Caleb Russell who's, who's down in Waterford there. He's, he's uh, learning his trade down there. So he'll be back to us in, I think, the middle of March or something. Middle, middle of March, anyway. Yeah, so first of all, We'll go back and we'll have a chat with the lads there in a while as we go around the workshop. The structure of the workshop itself, as you can see it here, it's 120 foot long, the building by 50 foot wide. We designed it there that we have four links dedicated just to, to the workshop and to the mechanics. And we also have two links here which are dedicated to our drivers and our operators. So in the main workshop here, on the right hand side in Bay 1, everything to do with engineering, and cutting, and grinding and drilling, uh, that's all dedicated to that side. Bay 2 and Bay 3 is for service and for bringing the tractors in and out. And this bay, which we call the workshop, is where we have all our benches, uh, all our bits and pieces, spanners, tools, everything is there. On the open side of the workshop here, you can see we have two links dedicated for the, for the drivers. They can come in there, they can do the little bits of servicing, uh, they can fill up with oil, wash the tractors, shine the tractors all the little bits and pieces that they have to do so that's dedicated to them so, so if you head out come on inside here we're going to show you there the exact layout of the workshop inside so starting off with the workshop here myself and Cahill there are going to go through the workshop uh, where, where it uh, where it starts and how it leads around first of all a very important thing in a workshop is a bin um, we get a lot of packaging and things come in here so we have a bin here with our crooks on and we can bring that over to the compactor and we can empty into the compactor and bring it back again Another aspect there is to have all your tools, we'll say all your, your brushes and shovels and all your lathers there, have them neatly organised onto a, a board like that, like a shadow board, so uh, you're able to visibly see them and that they're hanging up. As we walk our way around, <coughs> as we walk our way around, we have a bell here, so we can call a little bit of a meeting there if we want it by ringing the bell. We also have all our jacks and our stands and all our blocks of timber there, anything that we need to do regarding a little bit of safety, jacking up um, some of the tractors there for doing some service work on it. Little hand sanitizing unit here um, for just cleaning the hands before we come into the work. And uh, we'll see all our jacks and all our stands are all packed neatly under there. We also have Elvis and Marilyn, so when you go to the Elvis and Marilyn uh, corner, you know exactly where you are in the workshop. So that's really it. Um, we have an upstairs, we'll show you there, up to, um, up to all our other parts department up there. The likes of uh, jump leads and that are neatly hung up there as well. The full bench is something that we kind of debated over how we would, uh, how we would do with it. And to finish up, we went, basically we went with, with uh, there are eight B, nine B, one and a half timbers there. There's a little bit of pallet racking. It was unused pallet racking that, uh, we had and we just kind of welded it together and it's about 11 meters long the whole length of it so it's a good sturdy bench um, ideal there we have two vices on it we have also another room for putting another vice on so we, we have two workstations on it we also have our airlines which i'll show you there later on our airlines are, are at every point so we have we have airlines and we have all our electrical controls here we have three phase 32 amp 16 amp uh, we have the blue sockets and we have our square three pin sockets as well. The bench is laid out that we have everything at full view, so everything is accessible. The one thing that you want to do is when you're, we we'll say, working on a bench like this, is to be as efficient as you can. And that's what we talk about, having everything at arm's length, having everything in full view. So everything is kind of positioned in such a way that you don't have to go too far. We have all bits and pieces there in, in, in our little bo boxes, all the cleaning sprays, um, penetrating nails, and say contact cleaner, everything is there when you're going to do a job, free and out chain lubricant. We have all our little trays there with our pipe spanners, chisel sets, 
all the crimp and all that stuff is, is in here. Um, crows for when they hustle soak the player, so they're all in there as well. Ratchet spanners are laid out ni nice and neatly, all numbered there. So when you get a spanner, you leave it back. The rule in the workshop is that anything, any spanners that are used in the workshop do not go outside the workshop. You can see the sign up there. To avoid serious injury, please do not borrow any tools from this workshop. Yeah, watch so out for flying spanners. Because if Marco got a hold of you, he would, he would hit you at one. <laughs> so yeah, so we like to add a little bit of color to it as well. You'll see lots of different signs around the place. Case, class, John Deere, Steyer. Um, just to give it a little bit of a, of a, um, a lift there, Caterpillar for JCB. So look, at, you can buy the decals, decals there on eBay there, they're not a whole lot, of, don't cost a whole lot of money, but uh, they just give it, liven it up a bit. On the backboard here, we, we put a checkered plate there on the backboard, it just gives it a little bit of a, a shine there, and the likes of these here, they're not very expensive to buy, and you can hang up all the tools in it there, just, pop them onto the, the galvanese sheet there and that's it. So uh, yeah, look at it, it's, it's, it looks the part. We've all different spanners and different screwdrivers, long screwdrivers, short screwdrivers. Um, you can see though that they're all marked, all the red dots there, just to make sure that they're the full set. You know, if they do go missing, if you find them in tractors, you know where they, where they belong. Underneath then we have a series of drawers. These are drawers that were in one of the offices there. We just took them out. They're all numbered there. So every number has, we know exactly what's in each number, uh, what's in each compartment there. So something very simple. You don't have to go to major, ma major expenses there. The drawers are there. We also have a, this is a f an old fridge unit there that was in one of the, um, the kitchens there that we kind of use. So again, has all, it's all numbered there and it has all the different bits and pieces in it there. So we know exactly. We have our charger here in this corner and the charger is for the, Electric forklift. Electric yeah. forklift, yeah. So the electric forklift we use indoor here all the time. It's, there's no fumes, very simple. We also bring it in next door as well there, so we want to take down pallets or anything like that. So the forklift is, is ideal there for that. It's nice and tidy there. Yeah, it doesn't have a big wide swing in the arse of there. It's just nice and tight, yeah, so it'll swing around tight it's areas. It's a zero swing. But as you can see, we, we, on this end of things here, on this link, we have a balcony there and we have an upstairs in it there. We left it quite high because it just allows us to get tractors underneath there in three bays if we need to. So there's your 3350 there. Probably um, 175 r would still slot in underneath it there as well. So we'd have three different bays if we needed. But we were conscious of the fact that there is other things going on here on the farm. Apart from tractors, we have cookers, we have other things to service here. So we can actually, when them 3650s, whenever they get out, we'll be able to move stuff in closer there. So that's, that's what that bay is, just dedicated for that only. Uh, what else have we here? <coughs> yeah, the two benches. Uh, again, we have... That, we was were, a, that was the original one. Yeah, that's an old toolbox. I'd say that's there. Well, as long as I'm here. Yeah, it could be there 20 years, I'm not sure. But it's there, as I said, and it's still going strong. Um, again, Spanish, you just need to have everything identified that everything goes back in because the spanners probably there for 20 years because you, you get spanners are one thing, they kind of get personal with them. You know your spanners, you know, and you like to have them where they are. So that bench, that, that uh, toolbox has gone from the old workshop down to this workshop. Just a, a quick note there, when I do see this here, we have, oh yeah, these are our high bay lights. Um, so they're 20,700 lumen. And so that there are, we, have, we have nine of them here in the workshop. As you can see, we don't have any natural light in the shed, and it's, it's maybe one thing that we possibly might look at in the future, but uh, we have another shed there at the back of it, so there was no real point. So we, we have nine of them high bay lights there, and then we have six fluorescents here in this end of it as well. So we have a lot of great light coming through. The workshop, the workshop is situated too, that in the morning there, we have the, the sun in the morning, and the sun can kind of come round the back of us. And again, it's another point that if you were building a workshop, you would possibly have to look at maybe where the sun sets and where the sun rises, because you can get a lot of natural heat and light into a workshop if you position it in such a way. We just couldn't do that. We have a polytunnel at the back of us and the yard is in front of us, so it had to go in this position. But again, it's another talking point that if we were to maybe 
build a new workshop in time to come that we maybe might look at the position of it regarding to where the sun starts where, and where it sets in the evening. So that's, that's another good talking point to, uh, to think about when, if you're setting up a workshop. So again then we have, we have nicely coloured spanners here. They're not too expensive to buy. They just have an orange on them. They can see them very easily that if some of the drivers did happen to bring them outside that we could pick them out and spot them and then we can find out who, who bought it out. So that's the idea of that. And as you can see, they've been well worked. Um, well, they've been here since we used to help this workshop yeah. for nearly a year, is it? Yeah, so we, we, we're up and running possibly, we'll be a year in it now. Um, actually, I think next February, I think we're a year in it. So we've, we've put those spanners in and look, we still have every one of them. So it's, it's, it's obviously working to have spanners like that. And if anyone sees them out and about, they are the color and we can spot them and maybe... You can see the 22 there that you'd use most often. It's kind of getting worn well, more well than more, yeah, yeah. So everything else there, what else? We port, port the power there. We have a screwdriver set, nice handy screwdriver set. Again, nothing too expensive there, something simple, but uh, has all the little bits with the Torex heads and things like that. Tile, we have, yeah, we have tile with uh, podger bars, ratchets, everything there that we want, airlines and have them simple, have them hanging up and, and, and looking that at least we can see, see what, what we're at. In the corner then we just have a fuse box then for the, for the shed. We have an airline here which outside we'll see there when we go into the open workshop we have a compressor out there, it's a screw compressor there, a three phase screw compressor. Gives off a little bit of heat as well for if you wanted to dry we'll say any of your overalls or anything like that, it just keeps it nice and warm for the morning. Um, yeah, and it's all piped here. Now, it's a little bit... <clears throat> we have an airline going this way across here and an airline, but we will need to tidy that up a little bit, but it's still not bad. As you can see, it's piped the whole way across the bench from... It's 11 metres, as I say, from this point right to that far side, so it's... it's, it's uh, and, we, and we've made it in such a way that you cannot take these off because we had them on quick releases, but what would happen is the guys would take, release them and then they go off and then when you'd want to find it, you couldn't find it. So we've made it now that they're screw in and that they can't go anywhere. So, so there's, there's good pressure, good air pressure there on that. So something that we've set up there this year is, um, we'll say the likes of the servers, the, track, the servers on the tractors there, we used to have everything on, on whiteboard here, but with the amount of tractors and the amount of uh, equipment, machinery that we have, we physically could, couldn't get it onto, uh, onto a whiteboard. Now we also have a diary there that we fill in every day of, of all the, the jobs that are done on the farm. But one thing that we've set up here is we have all the machinery and all the tractors here on an Excel spreadsheet there on the computer. In the corner here we have Wi-Fi, we have everything organised there. So talk us through one of them there, Sean. I see you have what, an 8430 up there on the screen. Yeah, so we've the, the 8430 up here. So you can see there back during the start of the year, the hydraulic fan bell snapped. That was fitted earlier on. During the summer, we done our service. That's all filled in. Even adding from tightening up the fan belt to full engine oil is done. Our work is outstanding there. The exhaust tip was non-existent. We have that fixed. That should be down there somewhere. And then the service due coming up, time duration, and everything. Just And even down to our serial number. So if, let's say the fan belt went again, someday Alan was out plowing. We needed to get a serial number quick. You're not running to the field to get it. You just look it up here, down to meet fair machinery on the phone, and get, get it sorted. Yeah, so it really has worked out beneficial there already. We can see it from a point of view that, and Sean is right, we don't have to go to the driver every time. We have the information. We can yeah. see sometimes if there is some jobs that are continuous there, then we can see a trend that's going to happen in them, and we, it might be the same with another tractor as well. So again, it's a stitch in time saves nine. Absolutely. It's, it's um, preventative maintenance, and that's what we call it, by getting in, having a look out, uh, having it on file that we're able to kind of come in. And also the computer is very handy here. There's loads of stuff now on YouTube. Yeah. We have Google, we can look at parts, we can look at bits and pieces. If there's something that we need to know, we can come into the corner here and uh, yeah. we, we can have a look anyway. So yeah, so that, that's, a great, that's a great job. We also have our two-way radios here as well, which are very handy there if you're doing small jobs and maybe one guy is on one top of a combine, another lad is underneath the combine, that we have total communication all the time. They cannot route them with phones, it's instant there. You can turn them on and off if he wants to pull a lever, push a belt or wherever it is. Uh, this side of things then, everything to do with, we we'll say that's cordless, which everything nearly nowadays is cordless. We've gone cordless from half inch up to three quarter inch here on the, on the Milwaukee there. 
a fantastic tool, this um, great power on it. We, this, is, we say this is the old half inch um, Dewalt and now they've come up with the small compact Dewalt. So you can see the size there. Yeah. These are nearly too big now for the workshop, for the guys working the yeah, workshop. Yeah, I have to say, the so first one we, we go for now. Yeah, so the first one we go for one of these. Now, the only thing is that the tractor drivers can use these and these are still very handy yeah. for in the field there if they're on the plows or anything like that. They're Absolutely. still big enough, there's still plenty of power in them. But as you can see, much, much bigger. Everything is cordless now, the grinders, the drills, the lamps. Um, it's our battery station here as well. So everything you have to do with batteries goes on in this corner. Okay. We pack, have our yeah, power pack, which we kind of keep plugged in. A good tool, this SIP uh, 3000 here. Uh, just ideal there for a little booster there in the morning for checking batteries here. We have the, the testers and that for checking the batteries. We also have a big battery charger here, which also is a boost as well, if we need be. Again, any batteries there, it's important to keep them up off the floor, off the concrete. You can always keep them on timber if you're going to keep your batteries. Uh, what else have we here? We have, yeah, little, little, little air fan, little fans there, electrical um, testers, and testers and there. <coughs> the multimeters, yeah, the, the grease guns now, these are getting very popular. Uh, we started with one. Now we've two, we've ordered another one there. So yeah. the Milwaukee uh, greaser is is great job, the battery operated one. We we actually see more of the drivers, don't we, Sean? <laughs> yeah, coming in, grabbing it, the likes of John and the lads. But yeah, it take, takes, sometimes you could be greasing up the back end of a machine and, oh, come here, would you hold this nipple and this, that, and the other. And the, that just makes it a one man job the whole time, you know? Yeah, so no, here's a great job. We, we've just seen a big. Uh, a, a, a lot of the lads just taking these up. Again, uh, this is something there that was talked about uh, on some of the comments there, was our shadow board. This is something we just done ourselves. So it's a bit too big bits of ply there that actually Colette, the sister of mine, she drew out all the bits. We put what we wanted to put onto the shadow board and Colette drew all the shadows around it. Yeah. I have to say, it's probably one of the best things that we've actually done here in the workshop because now we can actually see what moves in and out. Absolutely. As we say, while by right, the some of the of the spanners and that don't leave the workshop. The likes of a sledge and that might have to go outside the workshop and yeah. just to make sure that it comes back in. But you can see a few bits that are probably out on the floor that's missing there at the minute. Uh, but by and large, we have never had an issue. No. Everything seems to go back on. If we can't, we can come in. Sean can see it. Marco can see it. Mick can see it. We nearly know who has it. So yeah. the shadow board is a great job. We have our own clock up there for clocking in. Um, just to give us a time, we'll say if we're doing a job, we can write down the time. It's just a very simple clock and we made it up there with a John Deere sticker, so you don't have to go to major expense. But as we can see, the, three, the two 36s and the 33 are taking up this bit of, a, um, bit of the workshop here. And then we just have any, any bit of spills there, we just throw that there on the spills there for yeah. wiping up there. The floor, I have to say, the floor is, it's a power, flo power floated floor. Um, it also, we put a colour into it as well, and we put a sealer on it as well. So the floor is a really good job because if we spill any oil or anything like that, it's very easy to come along with the with the, with the, the stuff there. It's a great job. You know, with the sealer on it there, it lift up within a day if you put that stuff down. It lift up. Yeah. So as you can see, new. it just it does no stain in whatsoever. Yeah. It's just get the shovel, lift it up, and that's it. It's gone. So, um, <coughs> that's it. We have did 440 in. Can't tell you too much about it yet, <laughs> except that. Articulate, it's an American built machine. Eight wheels in it. So we don't know what the plan is for it yet. I bought it there a while back, so we've. It's a talking point for another day. Absolutely. So on, the, on this side of the workshop, we have uh, we have all our consumables, and we call it consumables is small bits and pieces like sort clips, seal and washers, jubilee clips, um, sort clips, grommets, hose clips, water, water, water fittings. We also have blade fuses, all our electrical connections. So any of the fast moving parts that we need, we have them in this section. Again, these are very simple. You know, simple you just right. label them up there. They don't cost a whole lot to put that kind of a shelf shelf on them there, and we find them great, don't we? Ah, uh, brilliant shelf, yeah. They, they seem very light initially when you put them, but actually when you fill them with the parts, with the, weight, yeah. the, the weight will actually keep them there in place. So that's all your consumables there. Simple things like little pipes there for dropping in the tie wraps and things like that, that you know you have everything in place. Colour tie wraps is also very handy, very handy that if yeah. you're dismantling any parts that you colour code everything and everything goes back on. Um, moving on then, 
Again, the radio, which is now on, is also very handy because <laughs> need a bit of light entertainment, don't we, Charlie? What Absolutely. are we on? Uh, I think 98 FM. 98. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I, I think uh, radio, RT radio gold is not the one that's on here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so then at the back then we have more power points again here. You can see them all, they'll be right around the, the workshop there. 32 amp, 60, 16 amp, we have our, our blue sockets and our three pin there as well. And we have our extensions there, we can extend. We don't actually like running leads across mm. the workshop if we can, trip because hazard. they're a trip hazard. So yeah. the less we have the best, and that's probably the beauty of all the cordless equipment now, is I mean you don't have to be pulling leads over and back. Yeah. Um, Little dollies there and little kneelers there for underneath the tractors. Very handy. Keeping the knees very handy there. Very handy. Uh, and then we've, we've dedicated one, two, three, four sections here just to anything with bolts or anything with that fastens on together. So we also have on the farm here, we have a, a kitchen in there that we use a lot of stainless steel bolts and that. So we, we have all everything color coded. So the likes of an 8mm bolt here, everything will be in red. So if you want an 8mm by 30 bolt, 8mm by 40, once it's an 8mm, it'll have a red colour. And again, that'll work its way across to nuts, lock nuts, washers. So if you need anything in 8mm, it'll be in the red section. We've then just colour coded for a 10mm that's in blue. So if you want 10mm bolts there, 25mm, wherever they are, that again, we have nuts, washers, everything is colour coded so that see even some of the drivers coming in, yeah. that they're not looking for a bolt here and a nut over here. It just simplifies it. It's very, very simple to do, but it's very, very effective, Thanks. isn't it, Sean? Oh, geez, when I started here first, I couldn't believe how handy it was just to run. Someone go, grab an 8mm bolt, bang, it's yeah. got you. are not rooting around through boxes or Yeah, because, I mean, no. when Sean started off, he didn't know, as apprentices don't, they don't know, you know, they don't, yeah. they're, not, they're not using nuts and bolts every day. But yeah. what we found is having a system like this, it's very simple. And then, as we say, everything is dedicated to anything that can fasten, what let it be tech screws, let it be raw bolts, let it be through bolts, anything that's that puts anything together is in this section here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the that's the nuts and bolts. We move over then to what we call macro side. So this is anything to do with engineering really starts here. And the reason we've done this was because that any the thing that you grind, you give sparks, you have dust. If it's next to your spanners or next to anything, you have dust everywhere. So we kind of contain that in the one section here. Come over here, Marco. He's hiding there, look. Yeah, so we're over here on this side where uh, all the engineering goes on. We have Marco here where has just explained maybe a little bit about the setup here. I see we have, what over here, Marco? This is for? Oh, for cleaning. Oh, it's very good yoke. Yeah, so the belt sander here is very good there for maybe... Yeah, yeah. for cleaning shafts, anything. After cuttings, oh, it's very good this. Yeah, and he has all his accessories here. If he needs, we'll see all his grinding discs, his cuttings discs. He has them all there in the shelf there. Just on, on view, easy to get. Again, he has, his, he has an airline fitting here as well. Um, which you, you might use the airline for the... The plas Di diagram, the plasma. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he has the belt sander there. His workbench then is... It's a big workbench. Yeah, no, it's mobile. And it's mm. mobile. Yeah, so he has, he has, as you can see, he has his own plugs here on the side of it there. So we can take this out yeah. and it's, it's plugged in here with a lead there. If he needs to bring it with him, he can it's basically... Long lead, yeah. Yeah, he long, and he can run the fork if inside it, take it out. He's three vices there, two at this corner and one on that corner. So for any big the heavy work, he can uh, work away. I had these are great big vice there for doing any of the big heavy work. So any of the heavy work is done here. Again, Marco, you have your shadow board here. Oh, yeah. How do you find that? Full, always full and it's very handy. All them squares, chalks, oh, wise grips, grinders. You see, all hanging. Yeah, so he has Evan here in full, full view. He's the safety glasses here. Uh, anything, his welding shields, his grinders. So everything is in full view. So you know that every evening. Yeah. Because you finished, put back. Because what, yeah. what can happen sometimes, Marco? Oh, sometimes then we just walk, walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what happens is they do walk, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So our job is to keep the back in. But once it's, once it's um, on the board, and in fairness to him, it's, it's... Yeah, you see what is missing then. Oh, yeah, perfect. Uh, in the corner here, we have just the, the little press, 30 ton press there for doing bearings, anything like that. Yeah. Again, very handy to have. Um, for pushing out bearings in the corner, then he has his plasma. That's the plasma cutter. Yeah, so he's, he might show you there the plasma cutter. Yeah, so we have a press here, we have a little 
small little lid here, very handy lid. I'll just turn the handle, just show you. So very handy for taking, turning down the shaft. We don't do massive amounts with it, but if we need to turn down the shaft for any reason, we have it there and we can take it down there. It's an automatic feed into it as well. So again, a very, very handy piece of equipment there in any workshop. Again, on any farm, you need a drill. So in this one here, it's, it's a two post uh, pillar drill. We have one there if we want to do a little bit of pilot drilling, we can drill on this. And if you move to the next stage, you can drill on this as well. So very handy if you want to pilot drill with this one and then finish drill with this one. You can work the two of them. Uh, we press the button here, I think. So yeah, so, and then you can select your speeds here, all the different speeds and that. That just once goes quicker and uh, very handy. His all his, his drill bits and that in the little drawers there, which is a great job. Bandsaw here. Um, very good piece of equipment and very handy. As you can see, you can cut at the different angles, you can cut straight. You can probably get Mark with there, cutting a bit there and showing you there how to operate that as well. It's essential then that probably you have some sort of a feed into it, like rollers here. So you can kind of keep it level coming into the, into the bandsaw then. And a little roller coming out of the, his little stand here for taking it off. So. Yeah, that's, that's a great little bit of equipment, it's three phase. Any of the equipments there are all three phase. Here we have just his, his shelving there for all his different steel, his box section, round, solid bar, bits of stainless and bits and pieces like that there. A great piece of, uh, yeah, it's very handy. He also has his, his cutting uh, equipment there with the bottles there. So again, for any heating up, if he needs to heat up a, a bearing to take a bearing off, or he needs to cut maybe cut out a bearing, still great to have. And again, it's mobile as, as it is. This is another piece of mobile equipment that we have. It's for, it's for putting it into the forklift, bring the bring it around the forklift. And again, if, if there's a job on outside, we can we can bring this with us. Um, it's fully it has its own generator and the whole lot. So we can basically, if you wanted to start up and you'd no power. You just hit the button there. So that, that gives him power there, so he's totally mobile then. He brings his grinder, he can walk away. He just presses the button then and stops it. So he brings the spanners with him, he's all in, inside there, there, McNehy there. So when he, nothing falls, when uh, he wants to just put spanners on the side of it, so on the far it can be a little bit, little bit shaky, but with the magnetics there on the side, you can put a spanner in here and show it down there. And we also have a lip in it here, so nothing falls out. So that's very handy to have as well. Marco also has his own toolbox over here with a small device on it as well. A uh, little welder there, inverter welder on it, and there's small bits and pieces there. So again, it's mobile. You can, when he's doing a job there, you can bring so again, it around. Here, Marco has his welding curtain. It, it, it acts as two things. If he was welding there and there's a bit of a breeze coming in, it can stop the bit of breeze when, he, when he's welding with the, with the MIG welder. And also, if he's cutting with the grinding, because if you have sparks flying over and it hits the glass, it, it will mark the glass and you won't get it off the glass. So it's important to have something like a curtain there, like that, a welding curtain there, just to keep the sparks from flying and keeping the wind away from the, when he's welding there with the, with the MIG welder. So anything after that, we have a few accessories there that we find very handy in the workshop. This, um, this table here, which will pump up there, go up and down. We can sit the pallet up in it there. You're working at that kind of height. If you want to work here, we can sit the pallet on and we can lift the pallet off of the forklift. Very, very handy to have. Again, we also have this as well, which works out there, Sean. That'll lift up. That'll lift the pallet up to uh, waist height as well and let it down, so that's very handy to have. Anything else then in the workshop? The little trolleys are very handy. When the lads are working there or any of the jobs, they bring the little trolleys with them. So, and, and the magnetic trays are also really handy to have, because any nuts and bolts or anything that will stick to them. So, it's, rather than having leaving bits on a wheel or leaving bits on a ledge or anything like that, we put all the bits onto the trolley. So then it's much easier to bring the trolley around wherever you want to go. If you wanted to move to the far side of the tractor, bring the trolley with you. So for that job, everything is in the trolley. So if um, we want to go upstairs then, I can just show you up in the balcony there, upstairs to, we have a lot of parts as regarding, we'll say, bearings, chains, anything to do with, um, parts of the pack house and that, there would be a lot of bits and pieces up there as well. Yeah, upstairs then on, on the, above the, the mezzanine floor there, we have all our different bearings and chains and 
filters and paint and so we've all our little bits and pieces here we also do a little bit of hydraulic crimping there if we need to do a uh, hydraulic pipe, pipe or anything like that we have our own see so our own fittings all our own fittings here which basically go in there and we can crimp the pipe and do whatever we have if we put the pipe in there we can crimp the fitting onto it we can also come along and cut we've all the pipe here so we go we have a quarter We've three eighth and we've half inch pipe there. Look at these crimpers here. This one generally stays. This one we have, we can bring into the field if we want. It's an older type one, so we bring that one to the field if we want to do a job um, that we don't have to take the pipe back. Maybe it's a big job to take the pipe off. So it's 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 portable as this is portable as well, but we'd bring that one. So yeah, anything else goes on. We have the barber here on the corner. This is a little enterprise that was set up by Carl here, who's taking the video behind me. Set up there, Jordan Cove there, cuts all the hair for the lads in the workshop here and out in the pack house there as well. So great little set up here, I have to say. And he's very good at it as well. So fair play to him for that. Yeah, so we're next door here in what we call the open workshop. We've two links of an open workshop. Again, plenty of lights on. You'll see a lot of pallet racking. It's all racked out with pallet racking um, around in the U here. And we've all our different, we've different bits and pieces. We have everything from a GF silage towers, uh, electrical panels, so John Deere parts. So anytime we get, we do a job or we get parts in, we, we put a surround around that. We show you, say, we put a surround around the pallet and we can clip it down and put the parts inside of it and lift the pallet up then with the, with the electric forks. And so everything then is neatly packed around and then everything is labelled because it's okay having it up on the pallet, but if we don't know what's in it, yeah, it's no good. So Mark will tell me what's in it and we'll go into collect there and she'll give us a name then and we'll put mm. the name, we'll staple it onto the onto the edge of the pallet so we can lift it down. The surrounds are very good. We got a lot of them there from Grimmy there. Um, there were old ones that were used. You'll see them up there, up on the pallet there. So we can just put them around on the pallet and put the stuff inside them. Sometimes we have to put a base inside if we need in case yeah, anything falls small, through. Yeah. Spartan falls through. So you'd see a lot of different parts. We'll go around them as we're going. This here now, Marco. So, so in the service and then <laughs> things, while a lot of our, we say the newer tractors are on a service contract and they'll either go back to Midloud or back to John Deere to get service, a lot of the older tractors we have to service them ourselves. So uh, we have an issue then with waste style. What do you do? It's always an issue. How do you manage it? So what we do is we have different tubs. We have these training tubs that we use. If it's a bigger job at that, uh, maybe we might pour this into this and then we use the, the little mobile uh, trolley there for bringing it from one station over into this end of things what we've done here is we have our IBC we have two IBCs one here has a cutaway and one here is um, is just an IBC there that we can they can come and get it emptied it costs you a few pounds to get it emptied but it's a very simple way will you just walk yep. us through there Mark what we do here so so basically we have a, a pump here it's an old hydraulic pump that we had from uh, old, up in the other workshop, that's right, an yeah. Old workshop, yeah. And it's on air here. So as you can see, we just pump, pump it in here. It sucks the air, sucks the, oil, the waste oil out of the drum and into the into the IDC here. And at that stage, it can, uh, when that fills up there, you can see it filling away. It's a much, much cleaner system of doing it rather than, we did initially have it poured in from the top. But if you got it wrong once, there'd be oil everywhere, so you can plug it out there, Marco, yeah? And then what do you do with the filters then, Marco? Filter, just here is what you call this. Yeah, so you just a little, a little draining se se yeah. uh, system here yeah, with a little mesh in it there that we put the filters on. You can dispose of them, they'll take them once the oil and that is out of them. So we let them all just drain away there in the ABC and again they, they come and collect that anyway. So it, we can also use it, we have been using some of the waste oil in our, we have an oil here there, a waste oil here which is up on top there. Sometimes we use there in the open workshop as well. So we can use it in, in, that, in that system as well. But just to get the oil from the tractor into the can and into the IBC. This is the cleanest way that we yeah, found clean. to do it. Yeah. As you can see, a little bit of oil here and there, but very little. So it's a it's great job, that kind of things. We also have a big airline here. As we said, we have the compressor in the corner and we have a big, uh, it's a half inch airline that we have here. So if you wanted to pump the tractors with a high volume of air, we have the big fitting on here. It's not the small, we have a bigger fitting on here for plugging in then and the tractors can come and come around it here. So this station then is, is, this workshop is basically for any of the tractors to want to come in, want to maybe get a, a pump of air, 
they might want to get a bit of a grease, they might want to get a bit of lubricant, um, a bit of oil. All the accessories here to the tractor are, are in this workshop as well. So you have pins, balls, Cat 2, Cat 3, all is there, clips. We have top links, drawbars, hydraulic top links are all in this section here. So if you wanted to come and get a hydraulic top link, while most of them will be on the tractor, sometimes they'll be off the tractor for various reasons. So they come here and the, and the driver can come and pick them up. We also have a little cleaning station here, so if they wanted to you know, do the windows or shine them up or do the insides of the tractors, all the cleaning products are here. And we have them all labelled here for the different, because some of them are for deep clean, some of them are for cab cleaner in the finish. We also have a, a glass cleaner, and then there's degreasing um, cleaners as well. If you want to degrease, we'll say from the back end of the tractor yeah. before you wash it. We find that the, the degreaser is very, very handy too, to have for back ends, pumps especially too. Let's see, Jack even went for the slurry tanker today, clean off the pump. Degrees yeah. are works yeah. brilliant. Yeah, yeah. degrees are off. We, we get a lot of products here from Maho Smart. We found that they're very good. They give us a great service. They come round there and they'll top us up there with a few bits and pieces. So shout out to the boys there as well. Um, moving on then, we have all our greasing is done from this point. So greasing cartridges is all done, is all in here. So they're all just <coughs> nicely packed away there that we can have, have uh, the different. The grease guns are here. Why we said we have some of the the battery ones, yeah. yeah. The battery ones on the inside, they probably stay on the inside. These are more for maybe going with the machines and that. Now we've tried to get every machine with a grease gun, even these, uh, the single hand grease ones there. Well, that's a double hand one, though. There is single hand ones there as well. Single hand one, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, so there's a single hand one there that we can come and they can grease with that as well. So we leave them, leave them there. We still would have a lot of grease guns on the machines themselves. Yeah because at least when they're on the machine, we have some hope of the drivers using them, Absolutely. If, if we don't. Um, moving on then to all our lubricants. So we've talked about this in a few different ways. In our old workshop, we, have, we had a couple of bigger IBCs for engine oil and that was, was, uh, was stored in them, but there's probably now, there's so many different, um, we have engines with have blue, engines without have blue, yeah. we have transmission, we have gear oil, we have hydraulic oil, 46. So we have a lot of different oils, a lot of different, drums and the handiest thing was to leave it in the drums. We've coolant here as well. So anything in the coolant we've dedicated with blue colour. <coughs> so in the likes of the coolant here, you probably still feel there's some coolant in that. So the, one of the drivers would have came along, he has to stay here at this station and keep his hand on it to empty it, it won't work any other way. So he keeps his hand here, pushes it in, fills up the coolant, tips off, puts the coolant in and then he comes back. What happens? Sometimes he's too much coolant, maybe he won't take it all. Yeah. The fact then that's in this can, will mean that the next lad that goes for it, it'll still be in this can. So there will be coolant in this, because what we found was that if they came back and it was a different can, he would simply tip it out and that'd be waste, and then he would top it up again. So the blue cans is for the coolant and the clear cans are for engine. <coughs> Anything to do with red, which is transmission, will be in the red can. So in here we have three marked with the reds in it, so we can see the, the transmission dial. So when he goes back in and we can see here the case, that there's transmission oil still left in the can. So that can be used rather than tipped out and maybe go for engine oil or something like that. So that has worked very well, hasn't it, Sean? Oh, geez. Again, back to when I started, I did not know, not too familiar with my oils, but that just made things an awful lot simpler. Yeah, yeah so, so it's to make it as simple as we can for the drivers because we can't tell them it's in that barrel. If it's red, it's trans transmission. If it's in, in a white can, it's engine. And if it's blue, it's coolant. And if it's in a yellow can, it's hydraulic. Yeah. It's HV46 or, or Multivis 46. <coughs> so that has simplified it again. Having a drip tray underneath them, you can see it's quite clean for oil because generally there would be a mess but uh, it's quite clean underneath it there, um, from that point of view. We also have some carrier cans, as we call them, because sometimes we need to go to the workshop or we need to go to the, to the field and we need to bring a can of oil with us. So we have cans that we can pick and go, don't okay. we? Yeah, so we've all, the, all our cans are actually marked and dedicated to engine oil, to hydraulic oil, so you're not mixing and matching oils. For example, the lads went to the spread field today with a bit of hydraulic oil, had a hydraulic can in the back, topped it up. It was dedicated to hydraulic oil, there's no engine oil contaminating it. Yeah, right. and then we also have a few spare cans or a few spare barrels underneath here, so if we want to swap them in, we know the fast moving ones, like the transmission move and the likes of the engine ones move. Yeah. So we also have a spare, always have a spare barrel, one of them sitting there. Anything else then on this section you can see that has to do with PTOs. Anyone knows you'll always have a load of PTOs, there'll be wrong ends and
with covers and shafts and bits and pieces. Most of the machines they will have them on them, yeah. and some of the machines have been put away. Some of them are spare ones, or some of them are left over from. from so before. yeah. So after that, then if you move just around the workshop, chains, straps, the compressors in the corner here, three phase with a dryer on it. This is the the, the bench then for the for the the guys there from when they come in and doing their service. So the likes of drivers will all up their bits here. So they walk from that bench, they don't come in to our bench. Moving on then, all they can do here are plowed parts, cultivating parts. You'll see Mashio, Kneveland, Kneveland, Opico, Kneveland. So the two plows, Lemkin, all the bits are here. So the lads come in here if they need to do a points change on the plow, if they need to do a change the, the tines on, on the Lemkin sower, they can come in here, on the tiller, they can come in here, strip it off, put it back together. Again, they have there have their own shadow board as well. Again, made up of much more probably simpler stuff like, like the, the lump hammers and the hammers and the wire brushes and silsons and adjustments, panels and that. So again, it's laid out that it's uh, efficient for the lads, as we used to say, and we always put it down, don't we, Sean? Our efficiency is like, it's on the clock, you know? Yeah. You have to get lads out and get, get them moving, you know? With yeah. the busy periods. So. Yeah, so I mean, time, time is very important, and to have the guys working as efficient as they can, have all the bits, that's so, it. So yeah, so as you see the workshop here, we have, uh, from a safety point of view then, all the, the roller doors and that, they're all lockable. We have our alarms on all around the place as well. We can just go in there, press the alarm on. We have a couple of cameras set up in the shed as well. Cameras are very handy, at least I can have a look in if the lads have a bit of an issue. And I can kind of zoom in the camera from away if I'm not around to see what's going on and what's moving through the workshop. Because I'd be looking after the workshop as regards, yeah. as Sean does, to see what moves in and out. So we need to, we need to kind of just to monitor that as well. We have the two dogs there with Blake and, and Bruce there, so they're always hanging around. Comes into the yard here, there'll be a big bark, and I tell you one thing, you wouldn't hop out in a hurry there when you see the two of them coming, so even though you don't at this stage. So uh, Marco's done well trained there. Right? Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the workshop Wednesday and the layout of the workshop. Don't forget, if you have any comments at all, uh, put them into the comments there and we'll get back to them. And each, uh, actually, if you have any ideas on how we could improve our workshop, let us know your ideas as well, because we'd love to hear them. So from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, from our workshop Wednesday, uh, we'd like to sign off and we'll see you next Wednesday.